Welcome back. Russian President Vladimir Putin is warning that the Kremlin could provide long-range weapons to countries wanting to strike Western targets. That would be a response to NATO allies allowing Ukraine to attack Russian territory. He's suggesting the United States because Ukraine hit Russia within Russia with U.S.-made armament, we're told. Putin claimed Moscow is ready to launch nuclear weapons if Russia's sovereignty is threatened. Joining us right now is Arkansas Congressman French Hill. He's the vice chairman of the Financial Services Committee and chairman of the Subcommittee on Digital Assets, as well as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Congressman, it's great to have you this morning. Really great to be back. Thanks so much for being here. So what do you make of these threats from Vladimir Putin? Is he suggesting that he's going to hit the United States here? I don't think so. I don't think he's that dumb. He's made these points before. Uh, look, he invaded Ukraine. Ukraine has a right to self-defense. Kharkiv, where this discussion is being taken, is right on the border of Russia. So Russia's full assault on a sovereign city within Ukraine is from Russian territory. So it only, only makes sense that uh, Ukraine can defend itself just across the border in Russia. I don't think that escalates matters. Uh, Western weapons have been used for Ukraine's defense for two years now, including sinking a significant amount of the Russian fleet in the Black Sea. Uh, and so I don't think this does escalate things. I think this is more of, of Putin's consistent rhetoric. Well, what about Putin and China's relationship? It's getting closer. And Putin yesterday commented on the Trump prosecution. He said that American courts are being used against the 45th president, saying that he stated Russia does not care who the next U.S. president is, and it likely won't change Russian policy, but that the courts are creating a mess for the United States. Your reaction? Continued Russian uh, expansive propaganda to divide Americans. This is just their M.O., whether it's with social media or 80 years ago without social media. This is what they do. But your point about China and Russia, you know, uh, Lenin said, as quoted in Time magazine uh, way back uh, during Stalin's days in the 1950s, he says, uh, the road to Paris goes through Beijing. Mm -hmm. And so this linkage, when China and Russia get together, it's not good for the West. It's not good for free market economics. It's not good for safety of sovereign countries. Yeah, I mean, Putin said the U.S. is burning its political system down during this electoral struggle. Authoritarian dictators like Putin and Xi don't understand democracy. Right. They don't understand the give and take. That's they can't, a good point. They can't even recognize how we make decisions in this country. Mm. And it's wild and crazy sometimes in American politics. It sure is. But, uh, but do we, over the last uh, almost 250 years now, you know, we've, we've succeeded mightily because the American people drive that process. Well, I mean, why is the White House continuing to tell Israel how to direct its, uh, you know, um, it, it, it's war on Gaza as it retaliates. Israel launched a new offensive in central Gaza, hitting the region with airstrikes and artillery. Uh, Democrats are outraged. They're expressing outrage over Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's upcoming address to Congress. We've never had a, a worse situation in five decades uh, in Israel. Israel's been attacked from across the border by Hamas, backed by Iran. Iran spends hundreds of millions of dollars backing its shadow organizations of Hezbollah and Lebanon, which is now threatening to escalate attacks on the north of Israel. Gaza is still, believe it or not, after this onslaught of seven months, the Hamas terrorists are still able to launch rocket attacks, as they did just a few days ago against Tel Aviv. So we need to defend Israel's right for its own defense. Mm. Just as we, I feel the same way about the government in Kyiv. We need to defi defend democracies that are being attacked by outside forces, a terror group backed by Iran or the Russian dictator. Yeah, Trisha, jump in here. Uh, ceasefire talks are still underway, as you know, but Israel says there will be no stop to the fighting during these discussions. Hamas is demanding a permanent end to all Israel defense uh, operations as part of a deal. Yes, I was actually going to revisit the Putin uh, interview. Uh, Congressman, obviously, as you know, Putin does everything is calculated, right? He rarely talks to international journalists. So this really was a message to the U.S. I know, as you said, he, he's conveyed this message before. They don't fear using nuclear weapons or conventional weapons, for that matter, long-range missiles. That being said, do you think that he's trying to invoke some sort of a Cuban missile crisis fear with the U.S., with the White House? I think, I think Putin wants to recreate the Soviet Union. I think Putin is trying to put the band back together of global communism where he sits at the center of it and dominates, whether it's in the Western Hemisphere or in Europe or in space. 
Do you think Venezuela or Cuba is actually on, uh, that could be on the table at this point? Look, I, nothing would surprise me about where Vladimir Putin uh, puts a provocative action, whether it's uh, in space or in the Western mm -hmm. Hemisphere or in Europe. This is what he's trying to do. It's why we in the House, particularly under the leadership of Speaker Mike Johnson, continue to believe in peace through strength. Appeasing the Iranians, as was the Obama and Biden policy, has only produced more war. And the same is true with the Obama position with uh, Putin mm -hmm. yeah. in Ukraine and in uh, Syria. And, and you've watched it all uh, from your from your perch. I want to switch gears, ask you about your work on financial services and digital assets, uh, your digital assets bill. Uh, FIT 21 recently passed the House in a bipartisan vote. Now it's on to the Senate. Congressman, tell us about this. You know, there's a lot of criticism that the lawmakers writing these bills don't really understand the digital assets backdrop. <coughs> Explain to us what this bill achieves. You bet. FIT 21 lays out a regulatory framework that directs the Securities and Exchange Commission, the bank supervisors, the Commodities and Future Trading Commission, how to handle digital assets so that we can have innovation in this country on blockchain, go to Web3, and it directs those supervisors how they should handle digital assets in, uh, to make them fit for purpose, which is the fit part of the acronym, with today's regulatory system. I think it'll create more jobs in the U.S., allow us to advance Internet to the next stage, and create lower costs and more opportunities for consumers. We got a strong bipartisan vote. 71 Democrats voted with us in the House. And I think that sends a positive message to the Senate work with us, create a digital assets framework that allows America to innovate and lead the world in this technology. How do the markets view this, do you think, Mark? I mean, you're an investor, you see, I mean, now you've got a, a similar amount of interest in crypto as you do in stocks. Uh, from from time to time, you, I, that. Uh, you know, I'm actually surprised that we didn't see a greater rally in crypto after the conviction. Yeah. Like, I, I would have thought that that would have been a one heck of a use case for diversifying and 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 actually having some assets maybe that the government doesn't see that closely <laughs> that they can't just confiscate from you. But you know. Obviously, President Biden was not okay with this for one reason or another. Um, how much of this has to do with potentially the, 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 the discussions that are underway about a central bank digital currency? Great question. So in addition to passing FIT21 uh, last week uh, with that good bipartisan vote, we also voted uh, legislation to ban the U.S. for creating a central bank digital currency without congressional direction and legal Oversight, we control in Article I money and how money is formed. We got, didn't get the strong bipartisan vote there because I think they're defending uh, the Biden administration and, and research on CBDCs. But the private sector should lead here. Yeah. Private sector stable coins, using the dollar as the backing, which is another bill we have in Congress that's pending, will be the gateway to a digital asset future where the dollar continues to lead the world in tokenized transactions for payments. And so a dollar-backed stablecoin bill plus a privacy bill, a nationwide privacy bill, plus FIT21 create the kind of ecosystem, I think, that's perfect for innovators here to bring money here, technology here, and as I say, give consumers choice. Can you have that kind of choice and that kind of ease with which to do business when you've got all these new rules coming out of the Securities and Exchange Commission regarding the climate change agenda? What about that? No, look, House Republicans have pushed back quite successfully, and the private sector has pushed back in the federal courts, including just yesterday, the uh, Fifth Circuit in New Orleans said that the Gary Gensler rule to try to have retail uh, disclosures for private equity funds invested in by institutional investors was three to, three, to, three to zero. They voted that's a dumb idea. And there are about 60 other ideas that are not uh, worth uh, consideration over the SEC. One by one, we're pushing back, including mandates on climate disclosure that don't make sense and aren't material to uh, the operation of a company. Really important for our viewing audience who uh, may have their own businesses and are worried about uh, this, this heavy hand of government. Congressman, we're watching your work. We so appreciate your Thanks, time. Thanks, Maria. Thank Good to be so with you. Thank you so much. French Hill joining us here in New York.